here's a good way to practice measuring if you're struggling with how much the marks mean on the ruler. Let's pretend this is an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper and you are working in InDesign software. Okay, you all have InDesign on your computer so you can use it in that way. Up here at the top of the window you have that control panel. Right here there's the thing that has the little boxes like this. Remember that's called the proxy. And each point represents uh, a point or note on the um, the element that you have selected on the page. And so you get the little proxy here, then you have X and Y, and then you have width and height. If you start with your rectangle tool, the frame tool that just has the X in it, and just draw a box on your page that is three inches square. Make sure your rulers are in inches. Remember you can right click on the origin here where the rulers come together and you can change it to whatever increment you want. So we're going to go with inches. Now if you have a box that is three inches square. I didn't quite draw a square, did I? Three inches square. Up here, there's a zoom field in InDesign, and you want to make sure that you have that set at the percent that makes this box really three inches square on your Mac screen. So you take your E gauge the clear plastic ruler with all the increments on it and all the E's and you hold it up right on your Mac screen put the zero here and three inches here and measure it and make sure that the zoom is the correct percent so that the size of the box on the page actually measures three inches. Then you can change the size of the box using the width and height up here on your control palette. Like if you made it 2 and an 8, that would be 2.125 by 3 and 7 eighths would be 3.875. Use your flashcards, use your notes, set it so that you know how big it is in decimal inches by having typed that value in there and the box will change in size to match what you have set. Then take your e-gauge and go up there and measure it and see that for instance when it says two and an eighth on your ruler you have zero and you have one and you have two and halfway between one and two is a half, halfway between that's a quarter, halfway between that's an eighth. So if you have the zoom field set right and you know that box is two and an, and an eighth because you typed 2.125 in the width field, then when you hold your ruler up there, you can compare and see exactly where is two and one eighth on the menu. Do that both ways, whichever is easier for you, the width or the height, and start work start with rectangles like I just described, and then do a couple of like oval shapes using the ellipse tool. Remember, under the flyout in the toolbars, or the, where the little triangle is, there's more tools that pull out, just like in Illustrator. So you could make something that is an ellipse. And you can see that when we measure an elliptical shape, we have to use our pencil on the paper. And we have to draw a rectangular bounding box right up against the edge of it, and then we measure the width of that pencil line that we have drawn. When we do the first quiz, there will only be rectangle shapes, but that's how, right here, that's how you do an oval. You draw a very fine, delicate pencil line around it to make a rectangle bounding box, and then you measure the box. So that should help. Send me an email if you need more suggestions. Practicing this way will give you a chance to compare what's on real, physical, in the actual ruler with what you see in the screen, and it will give you a chance to practice the decimals along with the fractions. On your e-gauge, the, the smallest increment that it measures is 1 16th of an inch. So each 
incremental mark on your e-gauge in the inch part is one sixteenth of an inch and you will verify that by counting from zero to one and you will see that there are sixteen spaces in between there